Hey guys, welcome back to some more F1 2018 and part 20 of season 2 of our McLaren career mode. In today's episode we have the Brazilian Grand Prix. It is a wet qualifying. We're going to get out there straight away. It's been a struggle to get through. We're struggling in these wet conditions for grip. Our dry tyre pace is brilliant. We were top in all three practice sessions, which I think that's the first time we've done that since being at Mercedes. So... We really are, you know, hooked up around here uh, when the, when it's dry weather, but wet weather is a totally different kettle. Well, we're coming up to the line. What's it going to be? Well, only fifth place. It's really not the best of laps. It's a, a bit of a shame, really, but uh, we just don't have the confidence in the wet at this point. We are gaining a little bit of time in that first sector, but that is where we're struggling the most, to be quite honest with you. Through the middle sector, we're managing to get the power down and, you know, get get some lap time, but everywhere else we're just struggling a little bit. Here we come then, this is a much better lap, a second up on our previous time. We're coming up to the line now, what's it going to be? Second, that's much more like it. Sebastian Vettel leading the way at the moment, which is mightily impressive considering Ferrari have got the fourth worst car. You know, as we've seen on the uh, performance street uh, at the end of a couple of episodes ago, we are going a little bit quicker once again. You know, I think we're possibly just getting a little bit more confidence, or the track's getting drier, in which case, you know, I'm sort of tempted to, to go out there and maybe try on a set of slicks if we go out go in now we'll still have time to come back in and get those uh, wet tires back on so I think I'll do exactly that so you guys will see me on the super soft tires very very soon Well, Fernando Alonso has gone quickest. We've come back out on the intermediate tyres. The super softs were a bit too early. Hamilton's gone quickest with a 17.4. I don't know what we're going to manage. But we are going purple. So here we come round the final turn. And you can see we are making bags of time. I'm not sure what this is going to be. But we're going to come up to the line. We're going to be the last person to set it. What is it going to be? It's a 173 and we take pole position for the Brazilian Grand Prix. What a lap at the end there from us. And we were just there just as the track dried up enough. Exciting race tomorrow. Your top three are the captain, Hamilton and Fernando Alonso. Goodbye for now then, but we're really just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Well, once again, we take pole position from uh, Lewis Hamilton in second place. Fernando qualifies third. Hopefully no penalties for him this time. He has been notorious uh, for that recently. But, uh, yeah, Perez, another impressive performance in sixth. So, are we going to see another race win on the cards for him we'll have to see but uh, time to hand over to David Croft and Anthony Davidson as we get into this very important penultimate Grand Prix of the season in Brazil where there's a will well there's a way and nowhere has that fact been better demonstrated over the years than here at Interlagos remember Senna winning while fighting a gearbox that was jammed in sixth five drivers championship deciders in a row between 2005 and 2009 and of course the passionate brazilian fans packing the grandstands to capacity every year and they're not about to stop now it's an unusual anti-clockwise race here at interlagos where the sao paulo locals are packed into the grandstands at each of the 15 corners around this classic 2.7 mile circuit Two very fast sections bookend the famous and highly technical sector two. We're getting a good run out of Jun Sao into one of the two DRS zones will be the key to any overtaking prospects today. 
Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Now, I want to ask you about Charles Leclerc. They've had to change their gearbox. It's never a good start to a Grand Prix when, right off the bat, you have to contend with a grid penalty. Fingers crossed that's one failure they won't have to worry about today, at least. There's not much of a silver lining to starting down the field with a penalty, but I think they'll be able to make some of that back up over the course of the race. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. The captain lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Alonso, Perez, Daniel Ricciardo, and Grosjean, Verstappen, Holkenberg, Bottas, and Sebastian Vettel, Stroll, Raikkonen. They've taken a grid penalty. Esteban Ocon and Gasly, Sirotkin, Ericsson, Carlos Sainz, and Brendan Hartley. Leclerc and Kevin Magnussen rounds off the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. OK, the run into turn one isn't too long, so the pack will be bunched up. Take care. Well, here we are down on the track then for a very intense Grand Prix. It's obviously an uphill start, so, you know, if we can get that sort of uh, start uh, on the real start, we will be delighted with that. Um, thankfully, ha um, Alonso is up here, and uh, hopefully make a move past Hamilton into Turn 1 and be our rear gunner. We would definitely appreciate that at this stage. Hopefully, uh, oh, Magnussen's out of the race. Wow, he must have had a engine failure or something. He was already starting at the back. Um, I'm wondering whether he's he is still going to start the race, but uh, oh, you know, a bit like when it says they're disqualified when they they make a bit of contact on the. Uh, opening lap, but uh, on the formation lap, sorry. But um, yeah, uh, hopefully Hamilton can have a strong result. He really hasn't hit the heights recently and uh, hasn't won a Grand Prix since Silverstone. Episode 10 of the, or episode 9 it might have been of this season. I can't quite remember when Silverstone was, but uh, he hasn't won a race since then. And there's Magnussen now. Is he out of the race or is he actually going to start? I mean, crazily enough, Hamilton hasn't stayed within 10 car lengths of us. Uh, so we're going to have a very long wait here. The rest of the grid is forming up. Be patient and watch for the lights. But hopefully we'll be alright. There's Alonso right behind us. Waiting the pounce into turn one. But, uh, oh, I'm nervous. Lights out, away we go here at the Brazilian Grand Prix. And it's a brilliant start from us. And Alonso, as well, has made the move up into turn one. There's yellow flags. And is that Kevin Magnussen? I'm not entirely sure whether it is him but uh, Perez has made his way past uh, Hamilton as well so Hamilton off to a terrible start Alonso having a look down the inside even though he's now in the championship battle and he takes the lead of this Brazilian Grand Prix you never thought Alonso was going to be our rear gunner did you and he uh, takes the lead of this Grand Prix we're still in second with Perez in third team orders will not be taken place in this Grand Prix uh, at least you know I don't think they will if we see Alonso pull over at any point then that's a, a cool feature they've added into the game there on the sneak but uh, you know I'm confident that we can overtake Alonso anyway so here we go this is gonna be our chance we're gonna stick it in to overtake so we use a little bit more energy we're right in his slipstream Look down the inside. Keep it clean, boys. And we're through. We're through on Alonso. 
boys coming back at us. And here's Perez. Perez having a look. Down the inside. Alonso locks up. Oh, well, we lose a little bit of front wing. Well, we're having a look down the inside of Alonso. We managed to stay with him despite having front wing damage, which is a testament to how hard we're battling here. Jeff seems to think we should be fine uh, as long as we don't give it any more damage, uh, even though it said red um, on the thing. It's still yellow flags around here. They still haven't got rid of Kevin Magnussen's car. And, uh, well, that pretty much means we're not going to have DRS available in uh, on the uh, main straight for the duration of this Grand Prix. Because uh, I'm fairly certain they're not going to get rid of it. If they haven't got rid of it by lap four, uh, it's obviously just glitched out because he's retired at the on the formation lap. Which I've never seen happen before on the, on the game, so... To this. Well, I tell a lie, we do have DRS on this straight. Just saw it with the yellow flags at the end of the end of the straight. They would uh, disable DRS around there, but seems like we're okay. Um, and we have set the fastest lap of the race, which is. Uh, good, you know, uh, there's still a very long way to go here. Well, we're coming into the pits, guys. And there we are. We're in. Still haven't been able to make way past uh, Perez yet. One point nine seconds was the stop, but we had to unfortunately wait for uh, Perez. And he's come out just in front of this group, and we've come out just behind it, which is going to be disastrous for our race. I don't think we're going to be able to win this now. I think Perez has this in the bag and it's going to be his third victory in something like five races, which is crazy. Go down the inside of Hartley. Let's turn up the ERS deployment and burn some of this energy. Yeah. The Renault knows where its battles lie and it's not with us. So Fernando into the pits. He was in third place. Well behind us though, so don't expect expect him to be anywhere. So there's the traffic gone. Here we come. Our gap to the car in front is 6.5 seconds. And let's hope it doesn't count as an overtake. Um, in the yellow flags, we're okay. So, we've got second place pretty much uh, decided now, but the, the big problem is we're a few seconds behind Perez now. Well, we've just sort of lost it out of the final turn. There's, there was no way we were going to catch up anyway. Sergio Perez wins his third race of the season at this Brazilian Grand Prix. We finish second and close the championship's gap to one point. Brilliant stuff from Force India today. What a superb victory. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. 
If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. I can see them on their way out to the podium now. Force India have really come a long, long way in this sport. And what a special race this was to see them earn that top spot. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Well, after a drive like that, it's got to be Charles Leclerc, hasn't it? Very clean, very smooth. He can be really pleased with that one. After all this drama, you'd be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Well, we didn't get any sort of uh, update on the driver's standings there, but we will have a look at that in the mo in a moment. Sergio Perez wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. 2.2 seconds ahead of us in the end after we lost it through that final corner. Lewis Hamilton finishes third ahead of our teammate. Fernando Alonso in fourth. Verstappen finishes fifth with Grosjean in sixth. Bottas seventh. And surely his uh, championship hopes are, are, are over after that disappointing display. Qualifying ninth, only finishing seventh. Ricardo finishes eighth, Stroll in ninth, and Raikkonen in tenth after a five-second penalty. Where was Sebastian Vettel? Well, he finished down in seventeenth. What a terrible Grand Prix for him. Ocon and Magnussen are the non-finishers. Into the championship standings then. We are just one point behind Lewis Hamilton going into the final Grand Prix, which is going to be insane. Vettel still in with a chance, though, only 23 points behind. Bottas 10 points behind. It's going to take a monumental effort from either of them to win the championship, but it's going to be another championship decider at Abu Dhabi. Perez actually moves within 75 points of the championship lead with his third victory of the season and uh, he'll be looking to, to continue that form going into uh, Abu Dhabi. In the constructors then, uh, Mercedes obviously have already claimed uh, the constructors title. We're in second, pretty much guaranteed to finish second now ahead of Ferrari in third. Red Bull a fourth with Force India fifth. Uh, and, and yeah, there's no way that uh, either of those, uh, well, any position is going to change really, uh, apart from maybe Sauber and Renault. Renault will be very disappointed to be down in 8th place, but that is going to be that for this episode, the penultimate episode of this series. If you've enjoyed it, then make sure you leave a like down below. Sorry that there wasn't much action in the race, but it was one of those where we were just chipping away at uh, Perez's time at the top and... Uh, as you can see, we did set the fastest lap of the race, but just couldn't get past him in the end. Too many little mistakes and, well, seven points there that we really should have had, to be honest, and we, we haven't got, and uh, that's very disappointing. Uh, subscribe to the channel for regular F1 content, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.